Hello, I'm just doing my makeup very quickly because I have to leave in like three minutes. <laughs> Today's a very exciting day because I'm gonna go book shopping with two friends of me, Sabine and Britt. We're gonna go to Amsterdam. We're gonna go to the Van Gogh Museum and of course, I plan on going to a bookstore. Basically, I just plan on going to the bookstore and buying a bunch of the books that I have on my 2023 to be read list that I made last week, if you've seen that video. Um, and there are just a few books that I really wanna get, especially one that I am so excited about that I really hope to get my hands on. Anyway, I'm very excited to take you guys with me on this little trip and show you Amsterdam because I love Amsterdam. I don't live there, by the way. I know a lot of you guys think I live there. I do not. It's just close because the Netherlands is super small. So every city is close. <laughs> so I put on my audiobook for the Queen of Nothing and made my way to the train. Sabine and I all wanted to visit more museums, so our first stop was the Van Gogh Museum. Or, as is the correct Dutch pronunciation, Van Gogh. What we were all surprised to learn was that apparently Van Gogh didn't find his true calling as an artist until he was 27 years old. As a 20-something year old myself, I often feel like I should have my life and my talents all figured out already, especially since there are so many stories of young professionals and big names already being prodigies as children or teens. So learning that a master artist like Vincent van Gogh didn't realize his true talent until he was already approaching 30 felt like a gentle reminder to all of us to not make too much haste. After waiting out a brief hailstorm, we went on our way to my favorite hidden place to have lunch in Amsterdam. I got out at our stop, but before Brit and Sabine could get out as well, the tram continued his ride before they could get out and we were separated. Gewoon. Echt best wel ver weg. Hij bleef maar doorgaan. We decided to just meet at the lunch room, so I went on my merry way. Hello. <laughs> this place is called De Laatste Kruimel, which means the last crumb, and they serve delicious teas, sandwiches, and a wide variety of sweets. The place appears small and crowded, but at the back of the cafe, there's a small passageway to a steep set of stairs that leads you to a living room style lunchroom. Oh, it's good to have it here, what's that? What are you gonna get? Geitkaas met walnut. And what's that in English? Is that like, yeah, goat cheese with walnut, apple olive uh, jam? <laughs> the food was amazing and with our stomachs filled we went on our way to Amsterdam's English bookstores. First stop was Waterstones. Yeah, Ooh, my, cover. 
My goal here was to find some of the books for my 2023 reading list, but I quickly got distracted <laughs> by pretty editions of books that I'd already read, like this comic style Frankenstein and a beautiful edition of This Savage Song by V. Schwab. They also had a full shelf dedicated to different editions of Tolkien's work. The first book on my list that I found was Hellbent by Lee Bardugo, but at this point I already owned a copy of it. Vlog for that one, coming soon. Sabine found Juniper and Thorn for me, which I honestly didn't expect to find in a bookstore, so it was a nice surprise. However, I decided to not get it because there's an alternate cover for this book that I find absolutely gorgeous, so I think I may try to get my hands on that one first somewhere else. <laughs> this is so good. Oh, this is it yeah. One floor up, we found the young adult section where I found the number one book that I was looking for, The Stolen Air by Holly Black. I was a little disappointed at first because it seemed like they only had the hardcover, but a little bit further into the store they also had a paperback edition, which perfectly matched my other Folk of the Air books. Brit Sabine and I got super excited when we found Kaleidoscope by Brian Seltznik, thinking that it had something to do with the new Netflix show Kaleidoscope, um, but we quickly find out that they had absolutely nothing to do with each other. Speaking of Netflix shows, when I saw a show cover of the Shadow and Bone books, I got super excited for season two, which is only two months away. The last flight of stairs brought us to the non-fiction floor, where I looked for some of the books on feminism on my 2023 list, but alas, they did not have them. With Waterstones done, our next stop was the American Book Center. I really love the layout of this bookstore because it has these infinitely high bookshelves that spiral all the way to the top of the store. It's echt my guilty pleasure. Leo's fave spotter in the wild. Yeah. <laughs> not a fave, not a fave. Oh, not a fave. <laughs> no, it was no, kind no. of problematic, right? Yeah. But still good. You could kind of enjoy it. Yeah. Guilty pleasure. And as I was browsing, I stumbled across this very interesting and creepy looking book called The Resurrectionist. It was filled with fictional anatomical pictures of fantasy creatures, and it also included a gothic style novella. Oh, oh, I love that. Oh, this is definitely oh my god. Creatures. Yeah, I, I'm a sucker for these kind of speculative medical works. Um, so I was very tempted to buy it. <laughs> Brit suggested that we take up the dust jacket to check the naked cover, which was also gorgeous. <gasps> yeah, you go. <laughs> oh my god. Intrusive. Nee, maar ik ga het niet lezen. Kijk, Lily is zo wijs. Ga het op mijn lijstje zetten. Ja, ik zou dat niet kunnen. I found an old favorite fantasy book of mine in the clearance section and my favorite YA contemporary book, Radio Silence, beautifully displayed on this typewriter. Today we've been a cat lady. Cats also say books. <laughs> When we left the bookstore, it was already getting dark, and with a total of three new books in my bag, I went home. Mm, I'm so tired. I'm so tired. I'll show you the books that I bought tomorrow.
yo, look at this sunlight on this one. <coughs> oh, why does sunlight make me sneeze? <laughs> Cup of tea, books that I bought yesterday. There is no other logical consequence but to chat about the books. I'm always trying to be very mindful with my spending habits and like my material buying habits uh, but at the beginning of the year I made a list of books that I really really wanted to prioritize reading this year I, I have a video about that as well um, you can click it like there and I was like you know what some of these books I don't own yet some of the books that I really really wanted to read I didn't own yet so I thought you know if I find them in the bookstore let's just buy them because just having them already is one step closer to actually reading these books that were my priority this year the first one that I have here is Sister Outsider by Aldrin Lord I think this is a very cool cover. Audrey Lorde is a poet and a writer and she is mostly known for writing about feminism and civil rights and this is kind of her essay collection but there's also some speeches in here and an interview. The most well-known essay by her which is a um, kind of a phrase that you may have heard before it's the master's tools will never dismantle the master's house and this is a phrase that I've heard being used more often before but I've never actually read the essay that goes with it so I'm very interested in that and then there's other essays in here about race sexuality poetry friendship and the erotic um, and I think other lords are very interesting there's a little bit of a biography at the beginning of the book like really quick first she worked um, as a factory worker a ghostwriter a social worker an x-ray technician a medical clerk and a craft supervisor and only after all that she became a writer i guess this is like an, another example of someone who kind of didn't i guess grow into the thing that they are known for until later in life excited about this one then um another book that i wanted to read because i want to read more like feminist fiction is the bell jar by sylvia plath kind of matches the color scheme whoa i Ooh, I perfectly matched the color scheme of this book cover. That's pretty okay. Doesn't matter. <laughs> this is a modern classic uh, about a woman in the 1950s that is really dealing with a lot of dark mental health issues. It's about depression and also very based on Sylvia Plath's own experiences with mental health. This is also the only book that Sylvia Plath has ever published in her lifetime. Um, I do know that there are quite a few other things known from Sylvia Plath but everything else has been published after she died. And it also says here, which is even just weirder, that this book came out only a few weeks before she died at her own hands. Um, so that just makes it an even odder experience. I didn't know that about this book. Um, but given that this is a book about a woman struggling with depression and it's based on Sylvia Plath's own life, I think this is going to be a very impactful reading experience. Look, this is her Sylvia Plath. I don't know how to transition to like the funny fun next book that I bought now. Um, so we're just going to transition. The, the last book that I bought, which totally does not really fit the vibe, um, <laughs> Of these two books, um, I bought The Stolen Air, a book about fairies by Holly Black. I'm obsessed with Holly Black. Currently, it's a shame I didn't read more of her books when I was young because she writes a lot of middle grade, um, but I became obsessed with the Folk of the Air trilogy and the great thing is that I can immediately continue with The Stolen Air, which is kind of the second series in the same world, but it does follow different characters. I think it's about like 10 or 20 years after The Folk of the Air, so The Cruel Prince. Even as I just read <laughs> the description of the back of the book of the character, Characters, I'm like, yes, I already know I'm going to love this because the characters are described as charming, beautiful, and manipulative. Exacting her revenge. She lives feral in the woods. Yes. <laughs> I also love the way that these books are uh, stylized. There's another map in this one that just looks really pretty. I love the art style and just the way every chapter header has these beautiful delicate little drawings even the paragraph breaks look in style and in theme and dainty and pretty and lethal so yeah consider me a holly black 
fan. You know, sometimes you're in the mood for these kind of books. And then sometimes you're in the mood for this. I think this is the yin and yang of books. Everyone needs a little bit of both in their lives. This, this right here, it's called balance. L last thing, let me just like quickly show you the book that I'm currently reading. I'm finally picking up Letters to a Young Poet by Raina Maria Rilke. I thought this was going to be kind of a big book. I stood in a, a bookstore a, a few days back. I didn't vlog this. Um, and I saw this and it's like 50 pages, 50 tiny little eeny meeny pages. And this is one of those editions that's only two pounds. Look at that, two pounds. And I was like, you know what, let me pick it up. And I've decided that I'm going to read one letter uh, before I go to bed every day. And I'm already on the second letter. I've heard a lot of people talking about how these letters from this poet to another poet have been such an impact on their life. He gives such beautiful life advice to anyone who wants to be an artist or a writer or a poet or something creative and how to pursue the dream. You know, if you're young and you don't really know what you want to do, and you don't really know how to express your creativity. And I thought, you know what? Hey, that sounds like me. So maybe Mr. Raina Maria Rilke can give me some advice as well. So you'll hear my full thoughts on this one in a wrap up. Every time I make a cup of tea to drink in a video, I never end up drinking it in the video because it's still too hot as I filmed the video. So yeah, we'll be finishing this video here and I'll be drinking this cup of tea in a few minutes once it's cooled down. Actually, no, I'll probably forget about it and then remember it in like half an hour and then it's cold. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed me showing you around Amsterdam and the beautiful bookstores that are there. Let me know if there are any books you recently bought that you're very excited to read soon. Um, and without further ado, no, that's what you say at the beginning of the video. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I really hope you have a wonderful day. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you soon in another video next week. Bye.